Okay, let's go ahead and solve this nice basic math word problem. It's not going to be that difficult. Matter of fact, many of you will know the answer after I get done reading it. Let me go ahead and read it now. It says, you owe five friends $3 each. You pay them back $2, uh, $2 each. How much do you uh, still owe in total? So that is the question. And many of you are already like, oh, I got the answer. Well, that's great. Put that into the comment section. But uh, the point of this video is not so much can you solve this problem. Okay, I know that sounds kind of crazy. A lot of you are like, what are you talking about? You know, you just gave me a math problem. Here's the answer. Well, I want you to kind of justify your conclusions. Okay, in other words, map out how you went from the problem to your answer. All right. What steps did you take? How are you kind of structuring your solutions? Because that's really the essence of doing mathematics. How could you prove that, in fact, you do have the right answer? Okay, so if you can think in those terms, that's even better. So put some of that uh, reasoning, if you will, into the comment section. And, of course, I'll walk through the solution step-by-step, uh, step, and I'll show you the correct answer in just one moment as well. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. It really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely will help me out. And by the way, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program and all of my uh, popular courses uh, in the um, uh, description of this video. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. But let's get into this problem. So what is the correct answer? Again, we owe five friends $3 each. We pay them all back $2. How much do we still owe in total? Pretty simple problem. The correct answer is five dollars okay so we owe each person one dollar each but in total we owe five dollars okay so probably 99 percent of you got this problem correct and for those of you that got this wrong i'm pretty sure you could get this right you just have to put a little bit more brain power into it but for those of you that did get this right let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100 percent and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert a certified expert in solving basic math word problems uh, i'm pretty sure your family would be very impressed with that knowledge all right let's move on and take a look at how to do this problem now uh, what i'm going to suggest to you is the following okay anytime you see any uh, math word problem okay whether it be an algebra problem or an arithmetic problem like this it doesn't make a difference what you want to do is use something called the rule of three. This is my rule. And what is the rule of three? Well, basically, it's very simple. It's, it's just a way to kind of uh, stop and pause before you start doing stuff. Okay, They're like, oh, I, got, I, can, I know what to do. I'm going to do this times this, and I'll add this, and I'll stretch. No, 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 just the rule of three. So the rule of three is, one, read the problem. Now, a lot of you are like, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't waste my time. Obviously, we got to read the problem. Well, read the problem real quick, get a sense of what's going on. So that's the first part of the rule of three. The second thing is to reread the problem. Okay, in other words, read the problem again, start getting some more details and, you know, start thinking about it, you know, uh, you know in, in a more kind of detailed manner. And then the third time you read that problem, really make sure you understand the question. So if you kind of build a habit, of reading a problem more than once, I'm gonna suggest at least three times before you start taking action. It's really gonna uh, uh, set you up for success because what I've seen over and over again through the decades is uh, students that, you know, I know they know how to solve the problem, the, uh, but the problem that they're having is they're answering the wrong question or they read the problem so fast that they do, they're using the wrong numbers, so slow down. All right, so that's the first thing you want to do is apply the rule of three. The second thing you want to do is to come up with some sort of model, some sort of uh, way to visualize the problem. Now, this isn't always easy, but uh, this is where you can get uh, very creative. And one, mo uh, one person's model is just as good as another person's model. But think in terms of how can I express my solution? How can I prove to someone else reading my work 
or if I was trying to argue my point to someone else, how can I, uh, you know, show them how I'm thinking? That's how you want to be structuring your solution. Okay. All right. So again, different ways to approach this, but we have five uh, friends, right? And we owe them three dollars each. So we have this debt, and then of course we're going to pay them back two dollars, and we uh, uh, still owe them some money. So let's figure out how much money uh, we owe. That'll be kind of the first thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll just come up with my uh, stick figure uh, model here. So here's my five friends. I have one, two, three, four, five friends in total. And uh, I owe them each $3. So how much uh, total debt do I owe? Well, all I could do is just add up these $3, right? So three plus three, yeah, add all these up. So one, two, three, four, five, threes. So I add up all these threes, of course, I'm going to get 15. Now, some of you could be like, oh, this is easy. Uh, it's $3 times five people in total. So five times three is 15. So, uh, you know, if you thought about it by just adding up the threes or multiplication, that's perfectly fine. As long as you did this correct, that's what counts. All right. So we owe or uh, you owe, you know, whoever this person is in this prom owes $15 in total. Right. So we want to think about what is our total amount that we owe and then what's the total amount that we paid back. And of course, that difference will uh, be how much we still owe. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about or figure out how much we paid back, what, how much in total we paid back. But uh, before we do so, if you have not yet subscribed, I hope you will consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, many, many years, put a lot of effort into it. I really try to help, uh, you know, uh, all of you out there. Uh, and I'm trying to cover uh, from basic math to advanced math like calculus. That is a wide range of material. So uh, when you do subscribe and hit that notification button, it really does help my channel out. And it just gives me that extra motivation to make uh, even more videos, right? I already have, I think, about 2,000 videos Um at this time. So whatever you need help in, whether it's fractions, word problems, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, check out my YouTube channel. Of course, you can check out my uh, courses in the description of this video. But let's continue on and figure out how much we paid back. All right. So here is our five friends. One, two, three, four, five. And we paid them back each individually two dollars, right? So how much in total did we pay back? Well, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is, of course, uh, 10. Or, again, we could just be like, we have five friends. We paid them back $2 each. So, of course, that is 10. Now, I'm getting someplace with this problem. A lot of you are like, this is so easy. You know, why are you taking such a long time to answer this real basic math problem? Well, you'll see why here in just one second. So uh, just hold on, and I will explain that. All right, so we paid back uh, $10 in total. All right, so what is our kind of financial situation here? Well, we owe, all right, so we owe $15, and we paid back ten dollars so how much uh, the question is how much do we still owe right so if we owed okay uh, fifteen dollars and then we pay these folks back ten dollars we still owe the difference between this two right so that would be fifteen minus ten or five dollars so that is the correct answer and most of you could kind of see like oh this is so obvious you know of course it's five dollars but here is really what I want to kind of, uh, kind of my secret motivation in this uh, particular problem. It's not so much solving this basic math word problem, but I want to make a connection uh, of uh, by using positive and negative numbers, right? I want you to think in terms of positive and negative numbers. And this is something, uh, it's part of something we call the real number system. Now, for those of you out there that are studying uh, basic math into algebra. Let me just uh, show you this real quick. We have a number line, zeros in the middle, and we have these numbers here, one, two, three. Numbers increase in a positive direction to the right, but we have uh, numbers that are less than zero. I know it sounds kind of crazy, right? A number less than zero? I thought, you know, zero is the lowest you can get. Well, not uh, at all. We can go this direction, negative one, negative two, and the more 
we go to the left, the, the higher the negative value, the lower the number is, okay? Now, all of these numbers here are what we call the real number system, and you must be an expert uh, with the real number system and the rules to add, subtract, multiply, and divide uh, positive and negative numbers. And those would include lovely numbers like, you know, 15 and 10, but fractions and decimals and uh, square roots, etc., etc. Okay, so this is kind of my secret motivation to do this problem was to introduce uh, uh, those of you out there that may not have heard uh, about positive and negative numbers about positive and negative numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem this way. When we owe somebody money, okay, what this is is what we call debt, all right, debt. Now, it's a good way to think of, um, a good way to think of debt is uh, thinking of this as a negative value, all right? So if we owe, we have to pay this back. We don't have that money. It gets subtracted from our bank account, right? So if I had $20 and I owe someone $15, that's like me having negative $15, right? So if I have 20 bucks, but I owe somebody $15, that's like negative 15, okay? Yeah, I got I got money, I have, a neg I have a negative $15, so I really only have $5. 20 minus 15 is five. So anytime you owe, okay, from uh, financial uh, terms, the, you, that's a, what we call debt, okay? So always put a negative sign in front of that. And now, if you have money, if you paid money, well, that's like actually um, having, you know, something in your bank account that you can spend. That's a positive value, okay? So if you paid, that was actual money. Debt wasn't uh, money. It was just money that you owed, right? So we can look at this problem this way. We have negative 15 plus a uh, positive 10. Okay, plus uh, anytime you see a number just like this and you're saying, well, I don't know if this is a positive or negative number, uh, this is just a positive number. Okay, so if I write 7, for example, this is positive 7. I'm not going to write a positive 7. If I want to say negative 7, I'll write negative 7, but positive 7, I could just write 7. Okay, so uh, a great way to think about this problem is that we owe $15 in debt, but we paid back uh, $10. So we know the answer is $5, right? But we still owe $5, but that is debt, okay? So what's the sign here? Well, that would be negative, right? Negative. So here, negative 15 plus a positive 10 is a negative 5, right? Because we still have debt. So for those of you out there that are uh, struggling a bit with uh, the rules of positive and negative numbers, uh, especially adding and subtracting, uh, using money um, as a model to think about positive and negative numbers is an excellent little kind of um, way to help you remember the proper rules. So there's other models, but uh, this particular problem, I thought I could uh, you know, kind of make this connection. Now, of course, if you weren't thinking in terms of positive and negative numbers, no problem, right? You just, as long as you can figure out and reason through the uh, solution, that's what counts. But remember, anytime you are solving a math problem, okay, typically most of you are doing this just to kind of have fun. You're turning this into a teacher. It's a test. It's an exam, uh, et cetera. You're telling a story, okay? In other words, you're saying, here's the problem. Here's how I got the solution. And here is how I, uh, you know, got to that solution. You have to say, you know, the steps, right? You have to express yourself clearly, right? And if you don't do that, uh, well, your teacher is not going to be so happy. Even if you give them the right answer, if you don't have any work, you know, they're going to be wondering, hey, did you like, you know, look at someone else's, you know, paper? Of course, that doesn't happen, right? Nobody looks at anyone else's paper. I certainly didn't do this way back in the good old 1970s or 80s. Well, actually, come on now. You know, everyone probably from time to time has looked over uh, from someone else's paperwork. You know, if you're like, you don't know the answer, but you don't need to do that if you just learn these skills one step at a time. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.